In this short tutorial, we're going to add physics properties to a chain that we create. So first thing I'm going to do is default, delete the default queue, press numpad 1, be in front orthographic view, press shift A, click mesh, and I'm going to select plane. And I'm going to scale this plane out by pressing S and then moving the mouse wheel out. And after that, I'm going to rename this plane floor. And once I've renamed it floor, I'm going to go to the physics properties which is over here and select rigid body and there's really really only two options you can select either active or passive if we choose active and we press play it's going to fall down due to gravity and that's not what we want we don't want this to have an active um, physics uh, property we want it to be passive in other words we want it to be to stand still but if another active element hits it it will interact with it Right, so we want it to be like a hard, like a floor or a surface, which it is in this case. Now that we've done that, the next thing we want to do is create a new collection, and we're going to call this chain links. And first thing we're going to do is press Shift A, select mesh, and click torus. And then we're going to press R to rotate this torus, and we're going to rotate it on the X axis. So you press X, and then you type in nine zero to rotate it ninety degrees. And then I'm going to press G to grab it and I'm going to press Z to lock it on the Z axis and just lift it up a little bit and for this short physics animation I'm going to lift it up to about this height I'm going to right click on it, shade it smooth and then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and for this to work properly I need to be in x-ray mode which is over here right now that I'm in x-ray mode the first thing I want to do is make sure I've got box select selected and I'm going to left click and hold in left click and drag it all the way across like this now that I've done that, I'm going to press G to grab it and press Z to lock it on the Z axis and create a chain link. You can use your eyes uh, to what you think is appropriate. I'm happy with that. Now I can deselect X-ray mode so everything looks nice and solid. And I'll press Shift D to duplicate this, but I'll press Z again to lock it on the Z axis. I'll bring it up over here. And then I'm going to press R to rotate this, but I'm going to press Z to rotate it on the Z axis and then I'm going to press 9, 0 to rotate it 90 degrees. Now if we look over here we've got a nice chain link. It's not exactly touching right now but that's fine. I'm going to press numpad 1 to be in front orthographic view and this process is a little bit boring. I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to press Shift D, Z and select everything again. Shift D Z, and you can do this as many times as you feel is appropriate. I'm just going to do it a, probably one more time now. You can do it more if you like. Shift D, Z. And because we created that nice collection, everything is um, neatly over here. So that's cool. So we've created 16 chain links, which is great. And I'm going to minimize this. I don't need to see all that mess. And we're going to select this bottom chain link over here. And we're going to go to our physics properties. We're going to select rigid body. And obviously, if the floor is passive, we want the chain to be active. So we're going to select active. And we've got two options. I'm going to demonstrate this quickly. Well, we've got many options now. We have to choose the shape. And if we leave it as convex hull, it basically creates an invisible shape around the object uh, that is the collision area. And if you have two objects, that are active with a, with a convex hull, there's no space for this in-between part. And if I press uh, play, they're going to fly away, which is no good. And we don't want that. So the way we fix that is we change this. Well, this one I can actually just delete for now. It's the bottom one, yeah? We change this to mesh. Mesh is one of the slowest, takes the most processing power to do, but it's the most accurate for what we want to do, especially with chain links. So now I've selected that. It's on a credit of mass of 1 kg, which is extremely heavy. Uh, <laughs> these must be titanium chain links. But anyways, I'm going to press in. Now, with the bottom one selected, I'm going to hold in Shift, and I'm going to select the rest like that. So the main one with my correct settings is over here. And all the ones that don't have the correct settings is the dark orange. Now, I'm going to press F3. And I'm going to type in uh, copy from active. So if I type in copy from active, you'll see object, rigid body, copy from active. We can also click over here, object, and you have to find rigid body over here. 
and you want to copy from active our active element is the light orange over there so let's do that object rigid body copy from active now just like that all these other objects have the same physics settings as, as this bottom one and we can test it out before and they had no physics settings but they're all set to active and mesh every single one and what that means is if we tilt this over here and we press play you can see the chain links are acting you know somewhat correctly and i'm just going to press pause i'm going to limit this to 100 frames and i'm going to play again and now i can run a little bit smoother because it's simulated at once and just like that we've created it i hope you found this tutorial useful and fun and i'm definitely going to make more chain link uh, physics animation tutorials in the near future